God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. My longing souls yearning for your courts, Lord. For but one day, more than thousands elsewhere. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. The sparrow dwells there, the swallow nests there. She lays her young, nestling by your altars. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. How happy they, dwelling in your house. How happy they, singing all your praises. How happy they, on the roads to Zion. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. For as they walk, ever-growing strength flows forth like springs o'er the bitter valley. The autumn rain covers it with blessings. Lord God of hosts, lovely is your house. Lord God of hosts, happy is the one who has the Lord for his shield and rampart, above all things happiest and blessed, Lord God of hosts, all who trust in you. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord God of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out their joy to God, the living God. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. They are happy who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. They are happy whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the roads to Zion. As they go through the bitter valley, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rain covers it with blessings. They walk with ever-growing strength. They will see the God of gods in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. For the Lord God is a rampart, a shield. He will give us his favor and glory. The Lord will not refuse any good to those who walk without blame. Lord God of hosts, happy the man who trusts in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. One day within your courts is it's better than, than a thousand, thousand elsewhere. elsewhere. Light dawns for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice, let all the coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right.
A fire prepares his path. It burns up his foes on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth trembles at the sight. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All peoples see his glory. Let those who serve idols be ashamed, those who boast of their worthless gods. All you spirits worship him. Zion hears and is glad. The people of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Light dawns for the just, and, and joy for, for the, the upright, upright of heart. Praise the Lord our God. Worship him on his holy mountain. The Lord is king. The peoples tremble. He is throned on the cherubim. The earth quakes. The Lord is great in Zion. He is supreme over all the peoples. Let them praise his name so terrible and great. He is holy, full of power. You are a king who loves what is right. You have established equity, justice, and right. You have established them in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before Zion, his footstool. He, the Lord, is holy. Among his priests were Aaron and Moses. Among those who invoked his name was Samuel. They invoked the Lord, and he answered. To them he spoke in the pillar of cloud. They did his will, they kept the law, which he, the Lord, had given. O Lord, our God, you answered them. For them you were a God who forgives, yet you punished all their offenses. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord our God. Worship him on his holy mountain. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They have held fast to his message. From the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. If the ministry of death, carved in writing on stone, was inaugurated with such glory that the Israelites could not look on Moses' face because of the glory that shone on it, even though it was a fading glory. Oh, how much greater will be the glory of the ministry of the Spirit! If the ministry of the covenant that condemned had glory, greater by far is the glory of the ministry that justifies. Indeed, when you compare that limited glory with this surpassing glory, the former should be declared no glory at all. If what was destined to pass away was given in glory, greater by far is the glory that endures. Our hope being such, we act with full confidence. We are not like Moses, who used to hide his face with a veil so that the Israelites could not see the final fading of that glory. Their minds, of course, were dulled. To this very day, when the Old Covenant is read, the veil remains unlifted. It is only in Christ that it is taken away. Even now, when Moses is read, a veil covers their understanding. But whenever he turns to the Lord, the veil will be removed. 
The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, gazing on the Lord's glory with unveiled faces, are being transformed from glory to glory into his very image by the Lord who is the Spirit. Because we possess this ministry through God's mercy, we do not give in to discouragement. Rather, we repudiate shameful, underhanded practices. We do not resort to trickery or falsify the word of God. We proclaim the truth openly and commend ourselves to every man's conscience before God. If our gospel can be called veiled in any sense, it is such only for those who are headed toward destruction. Their unbelieving minds have been blinded by the God of the present age, so that they do not see the splendor of the gospel showing forth the glory of Christ, the image of God. It is not ourselves we preach, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts that we in turn might make known the glory of God shining on the face of Christ. See how great is the love the Father has given us. We are called God's children, and that is what we are. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he really is. We are called God's children, and that is what we are. From a sermon on the Transfiguration of the Lord by St. Anastasius of Sinai, Bishop. Upon Mount Tabor, Jesus revealed to his disciples a heavenly mystery. While living among them, he had spoken of the kingdom and of his second coming in glory, but to banish from their hearts any possible doubt concerning the kingdom and to confirm their faith in what lay in the future by its prefiguration in the present, he gave them on Mount Tabor a wonderful vision of his glory a foreshadowing of the kingdom of heaven. It was as if he said to them, As time goes by, you may be in danger of losing your faith. To save you from this, I tell you now that some standing here listening to me will not taste death until they have seen the Son of Man coming in the glory of his Father. Moreover, in order to assure us that Christ could command such power when he wished, the evangelist continues, Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. There, before their eyes, he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Then the disciples saw Moses and Elijah appear, and they were talking to Jesus. These are the divine wonders we celebrate today. This is the saving revelation given us upon the mountain. This is the festival of Christ that has drawn us here. Let us listen then to the sacred voice of God so compellingly calling us from on high, from the summit of the mountain, so that with the Lord's chosen disciples we may penetrate the deep meaning of these holy mysteries so far beyond our capacity to express. Jesus goes before us to show us the way, both up the mountain and into heaven. And, I speak boldly, it is for us now to follow him with all speed, yearning for the heavenly vision that will give us a share in his radiance, renew our spiritual nature, and transform us into his own likeness, making us forever sharers in his Godhead and raising us to heights as yet undreamed of. Let us run with confidence and joy to enter into the cloud like Moses and Elijah or like James and John. Let us be caught up like Peter to behold the divine vision and to be transfigured by that glorious transfiguration. Let us retire from the world, stand aloof from the earth, rise above the body, 
detach ourselves from creatures and turn to the Creator, to whom Peter in ecstasy exclaimed, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It is indeed good to be here, as you have said, Peter. It is good to be with Jesus and to remain here forever. What greater happiness or higher honor could we have than to be with God, to be made like him and to live in his light? Therefore, since each of us possesses God in his heart and is being transformed into his divine image, we also should cry out with joy, it is good for us to be here, here where all things shine with divine radiance, where there is joy and gladness and exaltation, where there is nothing in our hearts but peace, serenity, and stillness, where God is seen. For here, in our hearts, Christ takes up his abode together with the Father, saying as he enters, Today salvation has come to this house. With Christ, our hearts receive all the wealth of his eternal blessings, and there, where they are stored up for us in him, we see reflected as in a mirror both the first fruits and the whole of the world to come. His face shone like the sun. When the disciples saw his glory, they were filled with wonder and fear. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared before them, speaking with Jesus. When the disciples saw his glory, they were filled with wonder and fear. You are God, we praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, Lord we, we acclaim you. You, you are, are the eternal, eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. God, our Father, in the transfigured glory of Christ your Son, you strengthen our faith by confirming the witness of your prophets and show us the splendor of your beloved sons and daughters. As we listen to the voice of your Son, help us to become heirs to eternal life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.